Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I'm Ancient Mew, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the Pokemon Sword and Shield Game Guide. Um, this guide came out on December 3rd of 2019, um, about two weeks or so after the initial game release, um, which is not quite uncommon. Um, usually game guides don't come out till about a week after the game releases, um, which is kind of good in a way because it kind of gives you an opportunity to kind of like go through the game on your own, explore and everything like that. This off of Amazon, um, it usually retails for about $48, um, but it's a lot cheaper on Amazon. I got this for around $27 or so. Um, so, uh, but I thought it'd be really cool to kind of go over this, um, in today's video to kind of, you know, um, a lot of people don't buy game guides. Um, I personally do for like the Pokemon games and stuff. Um, just simply because, you know, they offer so much, like, in-depth things that you can do, like, you know, hidden things that you can't normally find, um, you know, in, in the game. So, I mean, if you haven't played Sword and Shield, and you're kind of on the fence about it, you know, but maybe you want to watch this guy and be like, you know what, maybe this game might spark my interest. Or, if you're wondering if you've already bought the games and wondering if the guide's even worth it, um, to get all the hidden TMs and, you know, items and things like that, um, you know, this is definitely a really good start, so, uh, but anyways, here's the cover. Now, there's two different versions, um, basically, all that means is that, um, there's a cheaper version, even, and it's not hardcover, it's more paperback. Um, I went for the more, uh, collector's <laughs> edition, um, which is hardback, and it features, uh, Zysan and Zemazenta, um, on the front, and, uh, I believe the other one does as well, um, but not, it's not black, it doesn't have any of this kind of artwork or anything on there, it's a totally different artwork, um, but, you know, I, I went for the more expensive end and got the, uh, the hardback, um, cover, and also, the hardbacks come with a lot more, like, extra features and stuff, uh, mostly, you know, like, apparently here, if you can see that, if I can see that there, um, where it says, a special section of concept artwork by the game's designers, exclusive Nintendo Switch Joy-Con decals, um, but there's a lot of other cool things in here as well, um, this is the back of it, yeah. you know, um, I'm kind of happy with this. Um, like I said, I've, I've bought in all the game guides for all the core series uh, Pokemon games. Um, just because, you know, I, I like to know all the different ins and outs, um, the game guides. I know a lot of it you can just look up online, but I personally like having the book. I like the artwork. Um, I like how it's like more easily like laid out. I don't have to go searching through a lot of different menus or whatever to find what I'm looking for. Um, so I definitely like, you know, buying the guides themselves. Um, this is published by the Pokemon Company International, and the uh, reason why that's significant is that, um, Prima and Nintendo Power used to come out with the game guides, and then, um, starting with, I believe, Black and White, um, uh, the Pokemon Company International started publishing the, uh, the books now. Um, with Prima kind of doing a little bit here and there with, like, different special guides and stuff, but, um, as far as the main guides go, the Pokemon Company International was publishing them, and, uh... That's significant because Prima is actually uh, done printing game guides now. Um, game guides are actually in a little bit of a decline because, again, most stuff is online and that. So, uh, But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and open this puppy up and see what's inside. And then, of course, the guide itself. Let's back that up just a tad. There we go. Um, so, yeah, this is really neat. Um, it's a pretty thick book. You know, probably about an inch or so thick. Um, there's like 400 pages in this thing. Ooh, and here's some of the little added features. Oh, check that out. Woo! Here we go. All right, so we got this little bookmarker thing. I'll toss it to the side there. And this little bookmarker thing with Zamazenta on one side. Little cutout thing for the whole uh, English, you know, banner things. Zeisen there. That's really neat. This is not textured or anything, but it is kind of really cool looking. That's the inside of the cover. <laughs> um, looks like we got some switch decals, which are kind of neat. Um, and some stickers. Ooh, nice. So you can really decorate your Nintendo Switch. Um, I actually have the uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Switch. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'll do with the stickers, but... Um, 
you know, that's still really neat though. Maybe I'll I'll put them on there anyway. <laughs> And have a Let's Go Sword and Shield Switch edition. Uh, but you got the three starter Pokemon of Score Bunny, Scobble, and uh, Grookey. And the two legendaries. And then how to put your Joy-Cons on. So that's really neat. We have this little guy here. Um, just let you know about the Pokedex, which is soon to come out. Um, and uh, available in December. Okay. Um, I did pre-order this. Um, I don't know exactly when Amazon's going to, um, release it or Pokemon. Um, obviously this artwork is a lot different than what is on the Amazon's website. Um, if you can see that there. So, um, you know, these are typical of most Pokedexes. Most Pokedexes, um, books obviously have like this type of design or, or similar design to that. Um, it looks like it's also going to come with a bonus, uh, double-sided poster where you get the map. And then you also get another little, like, all the Pokemon in the background there. Um, so this will be really neat. Super excited about this. When this comes out, I'll do another video on this as well. Um, just to see if it's worth, you know, if you guys think it's worth getting the Pokedex. Um, for yourselves, um, like I said, I really enjoy getting them. Um, it's just, Again, it's another way that I can go in and look at the artwork. You know, I can I can look at the guides, you know, his attacks, moves, things like that. And like I said, you know, a lot of it's online. But, I mean, I find it interesting to get the guides, you know, I, I like paying the money and, and, uh, and getting that, but if you don't have the money, obviously, then online is your best bet, of course, um, so, but, yep, so, I'm super excited for that, and then we have our comprehensive map here, a little, like, poster, this is a more, like, in-depth kind of poster, and then this is just kind of like a walkthrough of a step-by-step -step guide of what to do next, um, and where everything is located, like what this is, what that is, like 10 is, um, the Watchtower Ruins. So, you know, it's just kind of neat telling you specifically what is what, um, the projected route that you'll be taking. And then, you know, all the different little, like, gyms and, and battle arenas and things like that. So that's really neat. Um, and this map here is like the map you actually see in the game. Um, so this is kind of cool too. So you actually get to see what the map looks like in the game um, Not necessarily like a real world type map um, Like you'll get with the other poster from the Pokedex. So and then of course on our back here. We have our Type matchup chart because everybody needs a type matchup chart Now the cool thing with Pokemon Sword and Shield is that it did repeat from uh, Sun and Moon an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, where, like, after you battle a Pokemon on your next encounter, you'll actually get to see if your attacks are effective against it or not. Um, a lot of people feel like that's kind of a little hand-holdy. I kind of like it, personally, just because it takes a lot of the guesswork out. Um, you know, I mean, this is always nice to have on hand as well, just so that when you build your teams, you know, and going in, you can kind of just go ahead and figure out, okay, well, you know, fighting is super effective against normal and ice is super effective against grass and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, it's really nice to have this as well, just, to, you know, just because, and then this kind of gives you like the effects and things like that, um, as far as like what Pokemon can and can't be, um, can and can't be. So... Um, but yeah, so this is a little neat little poster thinger here. Thinger. <laughs> and then, of course, our guide. Our nice little game guide. And then, look at that. Okay, that's it. No, no. <laughs> Just kidding. And then you have uh, Zemazenta on the back, which is really cool. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm not going to go over this page by page. Um, but I am kind of going to go through it a little bit just to kind of see, like, you know, what each section is in here. So you have, obviously, like, the concept art from Game Freak. Um, and this is just some of the character designs of the, you know, the people and uh, the Pokemon and stuff. And, like, how they, you know, articulate everything to show you, you know, just how much work actually goes into this. Um, you know, obviously, it's not just, like, copy and paste like a lot of people thought with the Pokemon and stuff. Like, they really take their time to kind of draw out and, and everything before everything gets, like, digitized on the uh, in the video games. So, the gym leaders, you know, really neat. And then a whole portrait of all the gym leaders. Now, this game, in Sword and Shield, you actually have version exclusives on gym leaders. So, in uh, Shield, you actually have a ghost-type gym and an ice-type gym. And then in Sword, you have a fighting-type gym and a ground-type gym. 
Um, so that's really neat to have version exclusive when it comes to gyms. Um, that's never been done before, so that's really cool. Um, and then you go to the table of contents, which basically just has you know everything from the walkthrough of the game to advanced training, um, adventure data. And then you go in, and here's a list of all the Pokemon in the Galarian Pokedex. Um, the National Dex is not in this game, unfortunately, so you cannot catch all 9,750 million Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry. Um, but, you know, you do um, get at least 400, um, although there is an unknown 400th Pokemon. So I wonder what that's all about. Interesting. But yeah, so, um, you know, that's neat. This is kind of like a quick start guide for those who have never, like, played a Pokemon game before or really don't know anything or just want to learn some of the new features in Sword and Shield that, you know, are new to that game that have not come out before. Um, this is a really neat guide to that. Um, again, our map. So that's kind of cool. You now have it in the book, too. Um, map of the Galar region. That's also another little, like, you know, uh, cities and towns and stuff that you'll be going into. Um, again, just more of like the adventure and how to go through everything. Um, then you have the version differences. So not only do you have the gym differences, um, but you also have the uh, Pokemon exclusives. So every single Pokemon game has always come with version exclusives. So this is no different. <laughs> so... Um, but just really cool, you know, um, on what Pokemon you can and cannot get. And also, it determines on which games you actually want to play. You know, I know, like, for myself, I buy both versions of the game. But some people may only want to buy it for, like, the exclusives. You know, like, oh, I like these exclusives more than these. And I can just trade for them later, you know. But sometimes you just want to catch them in the game and not fuss with it. So you just buy which game you want. But I, like I said, I buy both versions. So, because um, I'm a bit of a purist. <laughs> Um, and then this is just kind of like a, a guide on how to go through the game and everything. Now, you don't have to follow this exactly. Um, you know, this is just kind of like, you know, a little, um, adventure walkthrough that you could do to kind of beat the game quickly. Um, this is different, like, sub-events and stuff that you can do. So there's a list of that in there. So that's cool. And then, of course, the walkthrough itself. Now, the walkthrough itself is literally a page-by-page, -page, um, almost like... You know, it details absolutely everything that you could possibly do, you know, and then it has steps. Now, you don't have to follow these steps in order. Some of them you do, some of them you don't. Um, but these steps just kind of just walk you through the game, you know, like you can go here and you can go there and you can get this here and you can get that there. And, you know, it's just a really neat way to kind of like complete the game in its entirety, you know, and that's one of the things why I like the game guide so much is because it's not just a matter of just going through all the gyms, going to the gym challenge, becoming the champion, and you're done. I like to be able to go in through and get all the little hidden gems, all the tradable Pokemon, all the different items, like, you know, to where, like, the game is as completed as it can possibly be. And that's why I really like these guides, you know, and then it gives you a map of the, of the area, and everything, and it lists, like, what each area is, so you know where to find it right away, you know, if you want to get some clothes at the beauty shop, or whatever, um, so, but yeah, it just kind of gives you a step-by-step, -step, you know, comprehensive guide, it even lists some of the trainers you'll battle, what Pokemon they'll have, and everything, and that, you know, so, but, you know, it, it just kind of gives you a little bit of backstory, too, you know, I mean, it's not just, like, you know, cut and dry, where, like, you know, oh, water-type gym, use electric-type Pokemon, like, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of a, um, you know, story of who she is and everything like that, and, you know, so it's not just, you know, it, it, it's creative, you know, I mean, so don't think of it as just, like, bland, it, it's really not, you know, and then you have to go back a lot of times, you know, where it says, uh, revisited. Sorry, the light's bad, but yeah. So anyways, like I said, this is really neat. And then you get the Advanced Training Handbook. And this kind of gives you a guide of um, how to become the champion, um, know the battle formats, you know, type matchups, you know, um, recommended Pokemon for each type. So it kind of gives you a detailed... Um, look at certain Pokemon, like their stats and, and where they excel at and things like that. Um, so 
really neat um it actually goes into like shiny pokemon so that's really neat um shiny pokemon have been around since generation two um but there really has not been a guide as far as like who they are, what they're about, the ability to catch them. Like, the Shiny Charm has been mentioned, like, in Sun and Moon and stuff, um, which actually increases the spawns of Shiny Pokemon, but it doesn't really kind of, like, explain, like, why there's Shiny Pokemon or that there is Shiny Pokemon, you know I mean? Everyone just assumes, but this is really cool to have this hidden there to kind of let you know that, hey, you can catch Shiny Pokemon, um, but like leveling up your Pokemon and things like that, um, hidden abilities, learn from battle, um, try your hands at combos, um, just all kinds of different things, you know, different colors and forms. I used to do a lot of shiny stuff too. Um, it even mentions about Pokemon Home, which is going to be coming out, um, in 2020. So look, that's going to be, uh, interesting to look forward to, you know, storing, uh, it's kind of like Pokemon Bank. Um, but it's going to be even more expansive than that. Um, it's going to incorporate all the uh, 3DS games and titles. Um, it's also going to include uh, Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go um, into one ginormous like Pokemon storage containment unit. And it's going to be available for the Switch and as well as mobile, um, from what I understand. So um, we'll find out more next year, but that's going to be exciting to know. Um Gigantamaxing Pokemon, Dy Dynamaxing, and it even like shows you some of the Pokemon and how like some of their forms are slightly changed when they go to Gigantamax. Um, not every Pokemon can Gigantamax. Um, that's really cool. Um, Orb Beetle there. I actually have that in my one playthrough. Um, but then you got the different ribbons and they explain the different ribbons and that. Um, so and then you, of course, breeding. Breeding has always been an important part of Pokemon since Generation Two, and um, which is uh, gold, silver, and crystal for those who don't know. Um, then it just kind of gives you, you know, more of a guide here about the wild area. Um, this kind of explains different uh, signs and stuff that you see, like in the game, and what they're about. Um, so yeah. More of the wild area. Wild area is massive. It's so cool to check that out. Um, then it kind of, yeah, this all explains about the wild area. Wow, that's really cool. Um, these are different effects. Okay, I'm not sure. Oh, these are for your trainer cards. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. I haven't unlocked any of these yet, so that's good to know. Um, and then that's how to work on your trainer card. Um, your customization of your character. Which is even more expansive now than it's ever been before. So that's really good. Um, some of the different uniforms and suits that you can get in the game. Some you get for free. Some you actually have to purchase. Um, some of the different clothing and artwork and stuff you can get. Um, and then you have, of course, the adventure data. Um, which, again, just kind of lists like all the attacks, moves, um, items, all the items available. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff in here. So... That's really neat. So, power lens, treasures, key items, shop items that you can buy in, in the Poké Centers. You have another type chart here again. Um, so, but yeah, no, this is, like I said, this is really neat. Oops, you know, and everything. And, of course, all the credits and that. So, because they don't print them in the front of the book, they print them in the back. So, but anyways... Uh, like I said, this is really neat. Um, there's nothing on the back now, just the little sword and shield logos here on the back. But you have the legendaries, oops, sorry. You have the legendaries on the front. So, um, but anyways, guys, I hope you appreciate this video. I hope you like it. Um, hopefully maybe now you might decide on getting the game guide now. Or if you feel like, you know, it's still not for me, I'd rather just go online. Or, you know, if, again, like I said, that's your only option, then that's, you know, it's okay. Um, don't feel like I'm trying to force you to buy the guide. Um, this is, like I said, just an overview, um, explaining the guide and what it's about. Um, if you've never been, you know, if you never bought one, um, and just always kind of wondered what a guide was like. <clears throat> um, so, um, but yeah, anyways, guys, um, enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and, uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks, guys.